This is part 46 of my series on my Engage Model Railway project. Previous parts covered the project from its inception through the creation of the baseboard, selection and laying of track, building of scenic items, obtaining rolling stock, etc. The project is ongoing. This part covers the assembly and finishing of a cattle dock from the Ratio Plastic Kit. And here is the box that the kit came in with a picture as to how the dock might be finished. Here's what's in the box. A sheet of instructions, 13 plastic sprues, unlucky for some, in various colours. A sheet of etched brass parts and some translucent tops for the lamps, which I can't actually see in this picture. Maybe they were in the bag with the brass parts. If you watch previous videos in this series, you may know that I have strongly mixed feelings about ratio kits. The actual quality of manufacture of the parts is generally excellent. But ratio kits in N-Gage, which are the only ones I have worked with, tend to make ridiculous demands as to how you're supposed to assemble tiny parts, and they're rarely engineered to offer you any help in the way of locator pins, grooves, etc. The fit between the parts is also sometimes somewhat questionable, and the instructions are rather limited, with hardly any illustrations and wording whose meaning can be quite opaque. The net result is that, although I have over 50 years' experience assembling small models, I rather dread embarking on a ratio N-gauge kit. Here's a picture showing the whole of the instruction sheet. I'm not sure if you'll actually be able to pause that and read it on YouTube. Anyway, the first steps involve some fairly basic plastic assembly using liquid poly cement. These are the walls of the main dock base. Ratio do supply little triangular pieces to help you cement the walls square. However, there are no slots for those pieces, and exactly how you use them is pretty much left up to you. Once the walls have been cemented together in pairs, the two pairs can be glued together to make the hole. If I'd been designing this kit, I would have built in slots in the walls for the triangular pieces, which would have made the assembly process simpler and more positive. Now the dock floor and the ramp at the back need to be dealt with. The side of the ramp is supplied as a rectangle with grooves where either end can be cut off. You need to cut off the end appropriate to the way you want the ramp to face. The floor of the ramp comes as a rectangular piece with a groove in it. It needs to be bent at the groove to make the slope of the ramp. The ramp walls and the ramp floor are then assembled to form the ramp. Again, small triangular pieces are used for bracing, but as before, how you use the bracing pieces is left up to you. At left, you can see an additional part that I put in cut from one of the sprues, the bit with the writing on. I added this basically because the ramp floor didn't seem long enough as I was trying to put the thing together. Here's how I ended up getting the ramp together. I did also check it against the main dock, so I took into account the height I wanted it to come out. I'm not at all sure if I was correctly understanding the ratio instructions here. As I've said, I quite often find them unclear. Here's the ramp against the main dock. Probably the wall at the end of the ramp was really intended to go under the end. However, I don't believe that's a major problem. There's a small piece provided to make the very bottom of the ramp itself, and this works quite well. Next, there are some support pieces that go under the front of the dock. Again, I found the instructions unclear and was somewhat guessing how these pieces were supposed to go. This, uh, in this picture, is just a dry fit to see how I, if uh, how I thought they might go would work. I've got a magnifying glass stood on the bottom of the dock to hold it standing up. Having decided how I was going to fit these pieces, I glued the end pieces on lined up with the end walls. Here, both end pieces, support pieces, are glued on. Then I glued the top pieces and the central pillar into place. Only very mild sanding was required to get things to fit like this, so this probably is how they're supposed to go. Sorry this picture's a bit blurry. These are the steps to go at each end. Ratio just provide the steps themselves and the side walls. I made the light-coloured plastic pieces myself from spare bits of sprue, as I found it almost impossible to assemble the steps square using just the ratio parts. I put the pieces I made inside between the sides of the steps to hold the side walls the right distance apart. 
Once assembled, the steps are put into some reasonable position where they might be used to access the dock. Next, it is on to the brass parts, first the fencing. Generally, I have to admit that I mostly hate etched brass parts, other than for things like nameplates where they're really appropriate. For things like fencing, brass parts are hard to manage, and they don't look very satisfactory anyway. I will say that the brass parts in this kit are quite robust and are not as difficult to handle as some. All of the fencing is made from a combination of brass rails and plastic posts. Of course, this requires assembly using cyanoacrylate superglue and is not at all easy. I definitely suggest using a good quality hobby grade cyanoacrylate. I was using mercury adhesives medium, which I found excellent. The fencing has to be assembled piece by piece from brass rails and plastic posts and then glued into place. This can get very fiddly, especially where there don't seem to be brass rail pieces of the right length. This is a piece for the end of the main dock with the posts glued on, ready to be fitted to the dock. Here the fencing has progressed quite a bit. It gets more difficult as you go along as it's tricky getting pieces of the correct length and fitting them together with the gates. Here you can see that I've made a rather dubious job of fitting the back gate and I'm trying to get pieces the right size to fit fencing and two pairs of gates to the front. And here I've glued the fencing for the front together with the gates. I have one plastic gate already glued to the side fence at the left and hopefully the two pieces in front should then fit on to complete the fencing. The result is a bit rickety looking as I found it really hard to get the fencing together evenly. Also there's a fudge with an extra post at the right as despite my efforts I couldn't get the fencing and the gates to come out to quite the right length. So the result is a bit iffy but hopefully it won't look too bad when painted and weathered. It doesn't look too horrible now from some angles, though apart from my own mistakes I'm not terribly happy with the way the brass and the plastic go together to make the fencing. The result's always going to look a little bit odd from one side or the other so far as I can see. Still, I can live with this result. A certain unevenness in the fencing may not be entirely unrealistic. There are a number of additional small detail parts to be added. In front are two troughs that are provided, each made from three plastic pieces. Here the troughs are stood up the right way. I suppose you'd have to say they are supposed to be full of water or something. I'd have been happier if they were more hollow, but I wasn't anxious enough about this to try to carve them out. Other details are signs and taps, faucets for Americans. The signs are just little plastic rectangles that glue onto plastic posts. The taps involve a brass part being assembled with two plastic parts, as seen here. Here's a close-up of one of the taps. There's a drain formed into the plastic base. And here I've started with the painting. I sprayed the dock with basic grey first and then hand-painted other colours. Here's the same stage in a flash picture. You can also see here the little downpipe fitted onto the side wall at the left. There's another one on the other side. I was again quite confused as to where these were actually supposed to go and I just put them on somewhere that looked vaguely reasonable to me. Now I've added signs and taps and started to weather things a bit. Another view at this stage. I put one tap at the end of the front and others by the troughs. Also provided in this kit are four of Ratio's gas lamps. I've encountered these before and was forewarned as to the trickiness of assembling them. I wasn't even sure whether I wanted to use them with this cattle dock, but I decided to go ahead with assembling and fitting them. The translucent pieces are hard to work with. They cannot be glued with poly cement. I use cyanoacrylate. As seen here, I glued the shafts and tops to the translucent parts without taking the translucent parts off the sprue, as this is much safer since those angled slippery parts are very hard to handle. I've also edged the translucent parts with a black marker to make them look more realistic. I've assembled the lamp, these lamps with several kits, and in my experience the holes in the translucent parts are never big enough, so they need to be drilled out before trying to fit the bases to them. Next, the little spikes needed to be glued to the top pieces of the lamps. Again, I do this without taking the top pieces off the sprues, as this makes handling easier. 
Now the lamps are cut from the trans translucent plastic sprue. Next, I balance the sprues on the edge of an old music cassette with the spikes facing down, ready to glue the lamps onto the tops. This again can't be done with poly cement due to the different types of plastic type of plastic used for the translucent parts. Though I've assembled many kits that had transparent or translucent parts that could be glued with poly cement, but these can't. <laughs> it will just fall right apart if you try gluing with poly cement, and the instructions do tell you to use something else. Anyway, I glued the lamps onto their tops with cyanoacrylate. So now the lamps are nearly finished. They do come with bases and with ladders, but I decided not to use the bases and the ladders in this case. I just glued the lamps, uh, the lamp posts in place to the floor and the fencing. You'll have to bring your own ladder when you want to light them. So here are pretty much all of the pieces in place, but of course the cattle dock still looks rather harsh and plastic. So next I rather went to town weathering it. I used a lot of diluted black and brown to dirty things down, and then applied some diluted scenic cement and sprinkled on yellow gas gla grass flock uh, to create a sort of um, straw effect. Here's my final result under flash. Shows the detail well, but never very flattering to this kind of thing, I feel. And here it is on, in place on the layout. The ratio kit does include pieces for forming a platform over the track, but I didn't feel they would work at all well with the Cato Uni track on my layout, so I just used uh, I just put the cattle dock by one of Cato's own deck pieces. Here's another view of the finished dock on the layout. And here it is after I got some scenic accents cattle to populate it. I would have actually preferred brown Angus cattle, but the best I could find locally was these Herefords. Here's a more general view of the dock on the layout. And here finally with a couple of trains. A great western mixed goods just coming past the dock and a southern passenger train on the outside line. As always, comments and questions are welcome and if you post questions in the comments below I'll try to respond.